Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Can you grow beans, pole beans, green beans in a container? I've seen some folks try it and they've had some success. I'm going to give it a go. Alright, so in this day when we need more food to be growing in our yards and in our little suburban plots, um, I need to extend my garden space by, by uh, being creative about finding places to grow in nooks and crannies by growing vertically on trellises and by growing in containers and pots where I can't put in a whole garden but I could put a pot there and so I thought you know green beans man that's a prolific producer if you get the right variety and I have some pots that aren't doing anything sitting over here in my potting area I'm gonna fill them with some potting soil so uh, let's get going on that for green beans and for just about anything you're going to grow in a pot, you need soil that retains moisture because pots being uh, a small little micro uh, environ, if you will, uh, they evaporate a lot of water out quickly because they're not in the ground where the, you've got the whole ground to kind of absorb water, keep water, and hold water. So what I want to do is put a lot of uh, organic material in there that holds water. You could use cocoa core. Uh, I'm going to use peat moss, that's what I have on hand. In this day of social distancing, stay back from me, um, I'm not going up to the store to get some new stuff if I've already got half a bale of peat moss and a couple bags of potting soil. I can mix up a mix here that will retain moisture. Um, if you don't have those things, uh, yeah, you, you probably ought to acquire at least some coca core or a bale of peat moss and a couple bags of potting mix. Mix those things together and put a lot of organic material in there. You could use compost along with your soils as well to hold moisture. But I'm going to use peat moss. That's what I have on hand. Peat moss comes in these bales. You can find them at your Home Depot and uh, various other places. But uh, I've already got a little soil in there. I've already got some good potting soil mixed up for other projects. And it's, it's been amended with some fertilizers. And that's what we want to do. We want to take our peat moss and I'm going to put in half peat moss half bagged potting mix and then I'm going to amend that even further with about uh, well, about a handful or two of uh, basic organic uh, balanced fertilizers beans green beans especially fix their own nitrogen at least for a while and uh, yeah they, they'll grow in this stuff but you want to give them moisture retention that's the big deal so peat moss good for moisture retention once you get that stuff wet it's hard to dry it out Uh, it's hard to get peat moss to take water initially. Yeah, I've got to break the surface tension on this material. Once you do, though, it starts to absorb, absorb it readily. So I'm going to pre-moisten this. Now you can see I put a lot of moisture in there, but if I just scrape back the peat moss, you can see it's just sitting on top like that. So we're going to mix this up a bit. I'm trying to work some of that water in there. If I was getting a seed starting mix going, I'd mix with my hands, but that's such a small amount of soil that, uh, yeah, this is harder, you know, harder to mix on a larger scale. It's not very efficient to mix with your hands, but you can see how dry that still is, even after all that water we put in. We need a little more. Using the jet setting or forcing that water with a high stream down in there helps to mix it up a little bit. Up a bit. Now the, the downside of pre-moistening your soil with a container of this size, I'm using a 20 gallon Home Depot container, which by the way, somebody said that that's not really 20 gallons. That's how they're labeled and I'm using this container. To fill this container with pre-moistened soil is going to make a really heavy container. So you might want to do it where you intend, where you intend for these plants to grow. Look out Phoebe, look out, coming through. I want to do about a quarter of a bag there. So altogether about a about the same amount of peat moss that we're using. And I'll mix this all up real good. Now like I said this soil is only about half potting mix and even that potting mix doesn't have a lot of nutrition uh, available to your plants early on. So to get these seeds started I'm going to mix in some basic organic fertilizer. Uh, you can use any kind of basic fertilizer to get these going. I'm going to put in this Dr. Earth because that's what I've been using lately. And I'm just going to work a handful and a little bit more into the surface of my soil. 
just work it around so that you don't have plants growing in direct contact with fertilizer. So I have a choice. I got two kinds of beans here. I've grown these before. I grew these Blauhilde beans amidst my corn last year, but I didn't get any crop because the corn obviously was shading out the beans. The purpose of growing these last year was to do a bioassay on one of my garden beds, which had been tainted with herbicide. And so I planted these as an indicator crop to see if the corn had done its job and taken up that herbicide and stored it in its leaves and in its stems, and it had. The Blauhilde beans grew just fine. I didn't have any deformation, but by the time they were you know, getting about 10 inches tall, well, there was too much shade and they couldn't quite make it. I really would have liked to have a few of these, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. But I'm going to grow these long beans. These are Thai long beans. You can get them in all different varieties. I like long beans. Long beans are really uh, nutritious. Uh, they work well in our, in our heat and they grow like crazy. You, you can harvest them when they're young and about, uh, well, about as thin as a pencil, I suppose, and chop them up and use them in stir fry. I've heard that they're not really good boiled like you would do a green bean. But man, if you saute these, they're delicious. They're absolutely stupendous. And they put on a lot of beans. I had all kinds of beans last year, all through the summer. I was eating these things like crazy and I love them so much. So I'm gonna to try to plant some of these today. But these are old seeds. These are from 2014. I had a very slow germination rate with these seeds. So I'm going to plant them all in here and then I will go and thin them. Hopefully they will all come up and we'll have healthy seeds. I can choose from a a big population here but I'm just gonna plant them all and seeds uh, bean seeds tend to store better than other kinds of seeds they have germinated bean seeds that are ancient in origin so I'm hopeful for these seeds I'll let you know if we fail we fail and we start over we got some nice prepared soil so that if we fail no big deal Failure is part of gardening. I'm just gonna take some other soil, and cover those holes where I've pushed them in. I'm going to water them in well, even though the soil, I can feel that it's already moisture dense. It's got some moisture in it. But beans, these really ought to be, uh, have some high moisture in there to activate those little embryos in there and get good germination. So we'll do that. We'll put them in a sunny spot. Now these beans are going to need something to grow on. I'm just going to put temporarily a pole teepee in here, mainly because I already have one left over from last year. And I'm just going to stick that in there and as these start to come up and I select the ones that are going to grow, I will train them up, they'll probably train themselves up, this pole, this support. Now this support's probably not tall enough, but uh, we'll deal with that later. You want to get it nice and wet. Seed packets often say you should soak them overnight. That's a good practice. That ensures that they get nice and hydrated. But you don't have to do that. My beans over there I did not soak overnight. I just soaked them for a few hours. And I've planted beans before where I didn't soak them at all. These are not soaked at all. We'll see what happens. You have to keep it well watered. But if I get four or five plants in here, that'll keep me into some long beans. All right. You see it percolating down in there. That's a good sign. Boy, it's hot out here today. It's about 87 degrees. But we got our beans planted. We could have started these earlier, but the crisis we're all in together uh, has me thinking of growing more food in different ways and being creative in how I grow it. So that's why I chose to do these beans in this pot and uh, hopefully some long beans will be in our future in, uh, I don't know, about 60 days. I'm not entirely sure how long long beans take to grow, but uh, I sure do like them. They tend to grow all through the summer, and that's a good choice if you're looking for some beans that pr produce big foot long and longer, 18 inch long beans that have a kind of a taste like asparagus mixed with a green bean. And they're really good in stir fry. They're really good when they're young. Yeah, this is a good bean, I'm happy. Just to look around the garden real quick, other things are growing really well. The tomatoes are doing exceptionally well. That's my single seed challenge right there in that blue pot. And it's about to put on some blossoms. I have my first fruits of these micro dwarfs appearing uh, right in there. Cute little things, huh? My uh, dragon tongue beans are all up. 
that's encouraging. I'll probably have to thin those. We'll see. Uh, my uh, mustard greens are coming up, although I had a cat get in here and do some damage and remove about uh, about a fifth of them. But uh, yeah, the mustard greens are coming up. And uh, so here's our beans we just planted. Hopefully we'll get some good beans out of those. Uh, citrus is doing well. Everything's looking good. The squash over here is especially looking great. These are these, uh, these are, uh, what are these? These are gray, kind of like a, like a gray squash. Tomato plants are starting to put on some leaves. I'm going to have to prune them soon. My uh, stripy guy squashes are doing well, and my romaine lettuce is starting to look like they want to head up. I hope they do. It's so hot, they're probably going to bolt, though, and uh, they'll come out real quick and make room for these other plants. That's a dwarf. That's a berries, I think berries crazy cherry. That'll get 10 feet tall, that uh, tomato plant over there. I'm going to have to trellis him up. I got new good growth on my orange trees and citrus. got blossoms on this guy. I have to take some of that off because I want this tree to focus on growth this first year but i'll leave a few of them on there and just see yeah everything's looking great i'm gonna do a demo on how to trellis those beans that are growing there there's lima beans and i got a real simple trellis right there of string and man that that's about as easy as you can do for a trellis uh, i'm going to also put some cross pieces in there with bamboo just to give it some weight holding ability once those beans get up to the top of that string they're going to be heavy and so i want to put another piece of bamboo in there I got a whole nother video on trellising coming up in which I'm going to build that trellis and I'm going to show you another channel who uh, has done a real nice job of trellising and uh, we're kind of swapping some ideas together. Jan over at uh, Small Garden Quest, he's got a he's got a nice trellis, man. You got to see this thing. That'll be another video, but that's coming up. The heat has my radishes really doing well. Um, this is my Chinese red meat, my favorite radish, and it's starting to bulb up. I'll get a good crop out of that. On the other side, though, I've got uh, China Rose, and it's wanting to bolt. I've had to pinch off several flower heads and remo remove some plants. I think that variety, being a more winter variety, isn't going to make it here. I'm going to have to pull those out, use them as compost, because they want to bolt so bad, instead of uh, building me some uh, tubers. So anyway, things are looking great. Here's an update. Hey, girls! <laughs> they just got some fresh feed, so they're excited. Aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah, good chickens. All along the road here, we have sugar cane coming up. At about the spacing we had hoped for, there's a blank spot there. And this one's not coming up on this side, this trench, not as quickly uh, as this trench is. I don't know what that's about. But hey, we're getting a lot of sugar cane coming up over here. Nice. Oh, this is cane. That's cane. There's a little one coming up right over there. You can see from you can see from this exposed cane how they grow. Actually, two came out of this one, maybe even three. Wow, that's very encouraging. Look at that. All right, all down the line there, we got sugar cane coming up. Hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Like us on Instagram and follow us on Facebook, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.